In this video I'm going to show you the most useful shortcuts and commands that can drastically speed up your everyday workflow. At the end of this tutorial you should be able to issue, edit and search for the commands in the terminal easier and with a much greater speed. Before we begin with the tutorial, I'd just like to take a moment and say that if you guys find these tutorials useful, please take a second and like the video and subscribe to my channel. That means a lot to me and keeps me going. Also, if there is any subject you'd like me to cover in the future videos, please let me know in the comments below. Ok, let's start. First we are going to cover useful shortcuts. First set of shortcuts that we are going to talk about is used for clearing the whole screen or parts of the command line. First shortcut is Ctrl L, it clears the whole screen. So for example, if you have uh, your whole screen, let's do it like this. If you have your whole screen filled with certain data and you want to clear it immediately, just press Ctrl L and you'll clear the screen. I saw in many tutori tutorials around the internet people clearing their screen by, by actually typing clear. Please, please stop doing that. There is much easier way of doing uh, the same thing and it's of course Ctrl L. One more thing that can be very annoying is looking at someone actually deleting the whole line that he just typed by holding backspace. Please don't do that too. There are two ways at least to accomplish the same thing. So for example, if you have typed uh, some long line like, like this, you can delete the whole line by typing Ctrl U. It will just delete the line. So another way to actually I cancel the line, so not to execute this line that you just wrote is pressing Ctrl C, it will just cancel the line. So you can choose between these two uh, commands. The first one is, let's say, more um, clean one. The second one is basically canceling the command. You will see here in your prompt that uh, there, uh, it will report it as an error. But anyways, the command will be, uh, you will get the clear prompt right away. So don't delete the whole command by holding backspace. Another useful shortcut is Ctrl K. It deletes everything from the cursor to the end of the line. So, for example, uh, if you have a line like this, so you, for example, you were searching for the word Mozilla inside of uh, some log file, and then you want to basically search again, and then all you have to do is uh, to press arrow up to bring the last uh, command from the history, and then Ctrl left, and then Ctrl K. Control K, as you can see, deletes everything from the uh, current position to the end of the line. And Control Left is uh, moving the cursor back one word. So you move back one word, and then press Control K to delete every to delete that word, and then you can just type something new and execute the command. So it can be very useful from time to time. Another speed booster is finding already typed commands and reusing them. So if you recently executed some command and you want to use the same command again, it is much easier to find that command in history and execute it again than to type everything from scratch, especially if the line is very long. First well-known way of going through the history is using arrow keys. As you saw in my previous example, when I wanted to pull the last command from the history, I pressed arrow up. So, if I press arrow up right now, it will start uh, listing my commands and going through the history, so it goes to the previous one and the previous one, and so on. And if I press arrow down, it will basically go forwards through the history until there are no more commands. Even if the next command is similar to one of the previous commands, it is more efficient to find that command in the history and then quickly edit it than to type everything from scratch. So, for example, if I now wanted to, uh, let's say, print all the directories uh, in my folder, this is not a very useful command, this is just for the sake of this um, uh, tutorial, I can do it like this, so I can find everything in my current folder that is uh, of type directory and then just um, echo it out, so it looks like this. Uh, okay, so if I now wanted to do uh, the same thing just with the files, I don't have to retype the whole line again, I can just press arrow up and then go back here instead of D uh, put F for files and then just re-execute the same command. If the command that you're looking for was not used recently, then going through the whole history to find it just by pressing arrow up is really not an option. In such cases, we can search through the command history. 
We do that by typing Ctrl R, which invokes this search prompt, one line below your current prompt, and then you can just start typing the word that you're looking for. So in one of my previous examples, I used uh, access log. So if I start typing access, it will find the first occurrence in my history uh, where we have this access word. If that's not the line that I'm looking for, I can search for the next occurrence in the history by pressing Ctrl R again. And if this is the line that I'm looking for, I can just type enter and it will be executed. Next on the list of useful commands are commands for positioning the cursor. Those are Ctrl A for positioning the cursor at the beginning of the line and Ctrl E for positioning the cursor at the end of the line. These commands, in combination with Ctrl left and uh, Ctrl right, to move the cursor left or right one word, can really speed up your line editing. One of the examples that uh, happens very often is when you forget to type sudo in front of the command. So, for example, if we start type typing up search and then we re realize that we'll need sudo to execute this command, we can just type Ctrl A to get uh, at the beginning of the line, type sudo, then type Ctrl E to get at the end of the line, and then just type Vim, for example, and then uh, execute the command that we search for there. Next tip is editing the command line using Vim Editor. So if none of these previous shortcuts for editing uh, and navigating are not enough for you and you need something more powerful, then you can leverage the power of Vim Editor to edit your current line. So how we do that? Once the line is typed, you type, uh, you press Ctrl X, E, and then your current line will be loaded into Vim. Then you use Vim to change your current line. For example, I will uh, delete uh, the F, uh, add the D here, and then I will exit the editor with colon WQ, and uh, my change will appear in the prompt ready to be executed. So just press enter to execute it, and that's it. Other shortcuts that are less common for editing but still worth mentioning are Ctrl T swaps last two characters before the, before the cursor. So if we type uh, SL and we want it to type uh, LS, we press Ctrl T and it swaps the last two characters before the cursor, as you can see like this. Okay, next is Escape T swaps last two words before the cursor. So if we have this and that and we want to swap the, these two words, we press Escape T and as you can see it swaps these two, last two words. Next is Ctrl W, uh, which deletes the last word before the cursor. In one of my previous examples, I showed you how to delete the last word by pressing Ctrl left and then uh, K. Ctrl left positions the cursor uh, one word before the cursor and Ctrl K deletes everything from the current cursor position to the end of the line. So as you can see, a Ctrl W does the exact same job uh, just with one uh, shortcut, so even, even easier. And the last shortcut worth mentioning is Ctrl Y, which basically pastes anything that you deleted with Ctrl W, Ctrl U, or Ctrl K back. So, for example, if we have something, some line like this, and then we deleted the numbers, we can paste uh, those back with Ctrl Y. And to finish with the shortcut section of this tutorial, I will mention three shortcuts that are not used for editing, but are still very useful and very often used. Those are Ctrl D, Ctrl C, and Ctrl Z. Ctrl D exits, exits the shell, Ctrl C kills the currently executed command, and Ctrl Z puts whatever you're running in the background. Okay, now that we covered most useful shortcuts, we are going to talk about commands. Hopefully you still have more strength left in you, because I'm about to show you some awesome commands to speed up your workflow. I have to put a small disclaimer here that some of the commands might not work uh, the same on your side, uh, or not at all uh, actually, uh, because maybe you don't have installed on my ZSH framework, or maybe you don't have installed some of the plugins that I do. So if you don't, uh, please uh, check out my tutorial series on how to install and set up uh, all my ZSH framework and its themes and, themes and plugins, and then come back. I'll put the link to that playlist in the description below. Okay, let's start with the most common problem, forgetting to put sudo in front of the command. 
I'll show you three different ways to solve this. First way is to use bang bang command. So for example, if I type up update, press enter, and then I saw that I don't have enough permissions to do this command, I can type sudo bang bang and it will bang bang will pull the last command from my history and then uh, it will write it here and if it's okay I will just uh, press enter again to execute the command and that's it. I will not execute the command right now for the sake of this tutorial not to uh, waste your time. Uh, so next second uh, way to go around it is if you type up update but didn't press enter yet uh, and you have the sudo omyzsh plugin installed that I explained how to install in one of uh, my uh, tutorials uh, then you can only type escape twice like this and the sudo will be prepended uh, to the beginning of the line and the cursor will stay at the end of the line so tapping uh, escape twice it's by far the easiest way to prepend sudo to the beginning of the line but it only works if you didn't press enter yet and finally, the third and the last way that I'm going to show you how to uh, prepare sudo to the beginning of the line is uh, uh, by using these shortcuts that we talked about in the first uh, part of this uh, tutorial. Uh, and those are Control A and Control E. Control A to go to the beginning of the line, and Control E is a shortcut to go to the end of the line. And of course, you will use uh, you will use uh, maybe arrow up. So, for example, if you type update and then it didn't work you can uh, press uh, arrow up uh, to go uh, to pull the first uh, the last uh, sorry command in your history and then press ctrl a to go to the beginning of the line type sudo and then either press enter or if you need to add anything to the end of the line press ctrl e add something here and then press enter very often in my workflow, I need to go back to some directory that I already visited. A good way to speed up that workflow is using the D command. So for example, we are now in the uh, Apache folder. So if we now go to the, I don't know, uh, let's say home folder, and then we go to the desktop folder. And now we want to go back to this Apache folder. Uh, the easiest way is to use the D command, which will list all the folders that uh, you were in recently. And then, since we need to go to this Apache folder and it's number two, we'll just uh, type number two and press enter. And here we go, you're back to this Apache folder. I have to uh, just uh, say one thing so make sure that you make a difference between the history command and the D command. History commands list all the commands. And the uh, command all, uh, is just listing the folders that you were in. Okay, next tip is how to re-execute the previously used command. So, uh, if you don't want to go through searching or going you know, through the history with arrow up, arrow down keys, uh, because you know the command that you're looking for, uh, then you can re-execute it by typing bang and then typing a few letters from that command. For example, if I know that this command started with GI, I can uh, just type bang GI and then press tab and it will find the last command that had that started with GI and it's ready uh, and it's ready down and it's ready for me to execute it. Next tip is how to use the last argument from the previous command. So for example, if we now create a folder co called test1 and we want to enter that folder, all we have to do is type cd and then type uh, bang dollar sign and bang dollar sign will basically means take the last argument from the previous command which is test1 so if i now press enter you see that this uh, bang dollar sign has been expanded to test1 and then just press enter to execute this line next we'll see how to repeat the last line with certain number of parameters from the previous line so for example if you have some long command with several parameters like sudo app search vim for example and then you search for it and then you want to basically repeat the previous line but you don't want to type again sudo app search you can do it like this so uh, you type bang colon 0 dash 2 which means take uh, two, uh, take the previous line with the first two parameters from the previous line if you type enter you will see it they just took sudo app search 
and now you can search for something else instead of Wim. Like, I don't know, you can search for Git and uh, here we go. Next on the list are commands for quickly navigating through the folders. So first command is uh, uh, cd dash. So for example, if we go to our folder test1 and we want to go back, we can just type cd dash and it will go back to the desktop folder. If we type cd dash again, it will go back to test1 folder. Okay, next thing is, uh, uh, next useful command is if you want to quickly go to your home folder, you can only type cd and press enter and as you can see it goes directly to the home folder. Uh, next, uh, if you have all my ZSH installed, you can, if you want to go to the previous folder, so let's uh, go to the desktop and slash test1, and you want to go to the previous folder, you don't have to type cd, you can only type two dots, and it will go to the previous folder. Uh, if you want to go up uh, by two levels, you type three dots, and it will go up uh, two levels, so you end up in the whole folder. Okay, uh, if you want to go to the root folder, you can just type slash and you go directly to the root folder. Let's go back to our test one folder. And if you want to go to the home folder, another way aside from typing just cd is typing uh, uh, typing just tilde, which is, I guess, one letter shorter way. So, and this goes to the home folder too. Uh, if you have only ZSH installed, uh, also you should know that you can switch folders just by typing their names, you don't have to type CD in front of them. So if I type desktop and press enter, I will go to the desktop folder, no need to type CD. Useful commands to speed up your workflow when creating folders are take and md. So very often when you create a folder, you want to switch immediately into it. So instead of using two commands, mkdir and then cd name of the folder, you can use just one command which is called take. Uh, so if we type take test1, it will create a folder and get into that folder immediately. So as you can see, we are in, in the test1 folder. Okay, let's go back, let's delete this folder. Next command is md. So uh, when we want to create like a set of subfolders, one inside of the other, there is a parameter inside uh, mkdir a command that minus p which will let us create this set of subdirectories like test1 slash test2 slash test3 so if we take a look at this you will see there they are test1 and inside of it test2 and inside of test2 is test3 okay let's delete all those folders so you can speed this up uh, just a little bit with the md and then just the name of names of these sub uh, folders and if we uh, take a look you'll see uh, you will have the same result uh, just like with mkdir minus p okay guys this is it for this video these are the commands that i use the most in my everyday workflow let me know what you think I'd also love to see your favorite commands and shortcuts. Please share them in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to see more tips and tutorials like this, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.